Well, welcome to the beautiful Glebe Fishery. And I'm gonna show you a super simple margin tactic that has been catching me no end of beautiful carp like this. And all I'm using is a top kit and one section of pole to catch great fish like this. So it's a tactic that anyone who owns a pole can do. So if that sounds like something up your street, stick around to find out more. Great big common, it's immaculate that one. So today we're looking at margin fishing with a bit of a difference. Now I'm well known for using paste down the margins, loads of ground bait, micros, hemp, all that kind of stuff. But just recently what I've noticed is a bit of a switch to different baits and different approaches. Basically when I've been going on my matches, I've been mixing up my ground bait, soaking up my micros and then taking it all home with me at the end because the fish, for whatever reason, just aren't responding to big volumes of bait in the margins. Now, as the water like settles down and we get more consistent weather, that might change. But at the moment, this tactic today, simple, it's really simple, it's been working a treat. And, and just last week, I won a match fishing exactly how I'm gonna show you today. So as I mentioned in the intro, we're at the Glebe Fishery today. And it's one of those venues that's typical of like a big carp venue, as in, I'm, I, I, I call a big carp venue like four pound and above. So we're fishing for proper carp, no F1s, nothing and that lends itself to hard pellet fishing. Now, for some reason, and I've been guilty of this before, I always fish hard pellets, like out in the lake, maybe a bomb, short pole, long pole. But when it comes to margin fishing, I'm always thinking about using smaller particles. But as I keep saying, it just hasn't really been working of late. Putting big volumes of bait in the margins just hasn't really been working. And yet the other week I was fishing a match and I'm getting loads of fish to the far bank on hard pellets. I'm catching loads of fish down the middle on hard pellets. And I thought, why don't I just use them down the edge? And it's been working an absolute treat. And like I said, I won a match just last week and literally all I took with me was six mil pellets. And I was fishing, feeding frugally, regular, small amounts, but regular. And that is the key to this approach. And trust me, at the moment, Hard pellets fished in the margins is just as effective as piling in the ground bait, if not more effective. And the best thing is, you barely need any bait to do it. Now all we've got is a tub of eight mil pellets. Um, I've got, there's about two pints in there, but to be honest with you, that is more than enough. I'll probably take most of them home. And that is the beauty of this method. If you don't use your bait, put them back in a tub or in a bag, bring them again next time. There's no soaking, no prep required. Literally eight mil pellets out of the bag. What can be easier than that? Now, when it comes to where we're gonna fish, obviously you've got to think about, I want to feed by hand. So it doesn't want to be too far away from you. Today, I've got a lovely peg here at the Glebe and there's this little spot here that is a top kitten one away and I can accurately feed those hard pellets down there. Really simple. It's just four meters away. I'm just really accurate with my feed and that's important. I'm not gonna feed with any pole pots. I've got no big pot set up, I've got no kinder pots or anything like that. Everything I feed today is gonna to be by hand. So I need to position my swim close to me. I could fish it down that side, but I want to fish it close. And I think because you're constantly ringing the dinner bell by throwing those eight mil pellets in, the fish gradually get more and more confident and they will come closer into you. So it's a really effective way to fish and it works at so many of these cart waters. So rigs for this tactic are really simple. Like I say, I'm using eight mil pellets, so everything needs to match that. Firstly, the elastic, 18 plus power margin zip. Why wouldn't you? It is the best margin elastic that I've ever used. It is so good. And that's not me saying that as a new fish angler, it genuinely is. What I like about it is when you're lifting to those fish, you can feel the power in it, but the fish just glide off, then the power kicks in and you can get them under control. It has changed my edge fishing, this stuff. I really like it, it's just, it's just brilliant. Now going down, we've got 022 mainline, really strong. And then I've got a 0.4 raft float. Now when you're fishing with eight mil pellets, I've said this before on other videos, I love the raft float. That three mil tip for me is the right bristle. It sits there. We've got a windy day today. There's a lot of waves. There's, the wind's actually in the face and it's buffering against the float. I've got that 0.4 on there, which is quite heavy actually for the, for the depth and it's quite a big float, but it actually just sits there and just sits there rock solid, which is exactly what we need. We need stability and this float offers that. And the bonus of having that three mil tip is that when there's some fish in the swim, it's not gonna be diving under every little indication. That is nice and buoyant, holds up lovely. 
Now going down and the rig is simplicity in itself and I've just got five number eight stots and a number nine stot just above the hook length and then I've got a six inch hook length down to a size 14 Kamasan animal feeder hook and a little bait band. Really simple stuff. Fishing is simple. It's all about the feeding. So I'll show you how I've been feeding the swim to catch loads of carp this afternoon down the edge. Okay, let's get some fishing done. Now, I think the, the swim needs a bit of prep and I've done that before filming. Now, it's two o'clock. We're getting to that time of day when the fish are coming in the margin. I think that's the first thing that I wanna say is timing's everything. There's no point throwing eight mils down there at 10, 11 a.m. because they're just not, the fish we just won't be there. So it's pointless doing it. We wanna pick the right time of the day. So two o'clock onwards, you can start thinking about the margins. Now, all I'm gonna do, and what I have been doing is just feeding two eight mil pellets. That's all you need, just two, but regular. We're trying to just ring that dinner bell at all times, pulling fish into the swim. They, they love the noise of the pellets. They're so used to them. They find it more attractive than anything, in fact. So that's what we're gonna capitalize on, using that noise to drag the fish into the swim rather than volumes of bait. And actually, it makes the fish really easy to catch. Once they switch onto this, it's unbelievable. You'll get bites where they pull the elastic out, you'll get wallop unders that you just can't miss. And it is as simple as it gets. So we just put an, just a fish, just one of the eight mils on the band. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna flick the rig down the slope and then let it come in. So how I always do it, I just lift the float, flick it out and then hold the float. And then as I can feel the bolt coming underneath the float, drop it in, simple as that. And then what I'm gonna do is just get a little pinch of pellets, two pellets, and throw them accurately on my float. Now, I'll sp look at that. So full disclosure, I've been feeding this for about half an hour without fishing it because I've been doing other bits of fishing and stuff like that. But I'd, I'd say that that was a nice sort of amount of time to feed it before going on it. 20 minutes, half an hour, that kind of thing. And it looks like it's just the perfect start and that is in real time as well. Now, a good thing about this, rather than using the big pot, is I can just literally pick up some pellets and keep the little trickle of bait going in. So I can, while I'm worrying about this fish, I'm just building the swim up for the next one. And it's just a brilliant way of fishing. You're getting maximum attraction with that noise, but minimal bait on the bottom causing you any issues. And like I say, for, for whatever reason of late, the fish just haven't been coming to big volumes of bait, smaller particles, ground bait, etc. They will do, of course they will, like as they get hungrier, but for some reason with the water and the weather being so up and down recently, they've just not been coming to that. And that's a great start, look at that. And all we're using is a top kit and one section of pole and we can catch fish like that. And it's a great hook hold. And when you, you only have to take one look at a mouth of a carp here and at other venues to realise eight mil pellets are just nothing to these fish. And, I, and I'm convinced they're uh, almost addicted to crunching them. I think once they get that noise of fish crunching them actually attracts other fish. So it took a little, it was actually a bit quick that one. Not that I'm complaining. I must stress the importance of strong tackle. This is a fishery that, that puts a lot of demand on your tackle and you've got to gear up accordingly, like the O22 line. So I'm just going to repeat. Oh, so I'm just going to repeat two pellets. Oh, a bit rubbish of a throw, that one. And then flick the rig in. And then hold the rig out, like I said, and then drop it in. Now, I've, I've said this before, on other videos, when I'm fishing down my right hand, oh, look at that, unbelievable. And that just shows that trickling those pellets in for the last half hour has really paid off. Now, I always have my side tray on my left when I'm fishing, because I'm right-handed, I naturally find it easier on my left. But when I'm fishing down here, and I've mentioned this before, I like to have my bait on, or an option of a bit of bait on this side. And normally I'd have my bowl and ring here, but today all I've got is my slim and my little pot of pellets on there. And this is what I'm talking about with the elastic that's a game changer for me. I've not, I'm not even concentrating. I'm not following the fish or anything, but I know that that elastic's just dealing with the fish for me. I'm just, and it, 
it makes you smoother. Like I can just sit back, don't even have to look. I can the elastic. I can feel the elastics tiring the fish out for me. And I, what I can concentrate on is actually feeding for my next fish. You'll see I've fed two or three times since hooking this fish. I'm not even worrying about what's going on with my fish. I'm just no, it's not ready yet, so I can just concentrate on trickling those two pellets in because I, can, I just know that there'll be another fish waiting for me when I when I get back down there. Now the float is oh, it looks itself that one. Um, the float is a raft, like I mentioned, which matches the fish size and the pellet size. So the three mil bristle matches this but if I was using six mil pellets I'd probably use the um, for this margin fish I'd probably use the Diablo float or even a fury if I was fishing for bigger carp I'd probably use the fury but if like at um, somewhere like Lindome or somewhere like that I'd, I'd drop down to a Diablo and match it up to the six mil pellet but for this when we've got a lot of wind we've got big fish the three mil tip of this raft's perfect so again two pellets and I've fed four or five times since hooking that fish. So I'm willing to bet there's already another fish there waiting. Whether I catch it, obviously it'll take a bit of time maybe, but we've built the swim. We've not actually had a break in the feeding. Obviously, if you think about it, when you've big potting, you've got to land the fish, then you big pot, then you come back and rebate. We're doing it all without even worrying about it. It's a great, simple way to fish. There's no pole pots to worry about. There's no nothing. We're just trickling bait in my hand. And the best still, it's really effective as, we, as we're proving, you know, we're catching plenty of fish. Now, when it comes to feed, I can actually show you now because we've not had a bite as quick this time. But when it comes to feed amounts, feed regularity, obviously you've got to go by feel a lot of the time. You, if you're getting indications, oh, geez. If you're getting indications, then obviously, wait for it you know wait until you catch one but if you're not getting any indications just keep trickling pellets over the float because the noise is what's bringing the fish in as you can see the bites are amazing because you've got such a heavy bait on they wallop it under that one actually pulled the elastic out same deal just let the elastic do the work keep the pole nice and low And don't be, don't be frightened of adding another section as well. I always have a spare section just to hand. And if I need to add it, I will do. There's no, there's no prizes for hanging on for dear life and getting broken. I'm only interested in fishing the net. And if that means adding sections, add them. But I love this style of fishing because like I say, I'm not even, I'm not getting in a fluster or anything. The elastic's doing the work and I'm, I can just concentrate fully on getting my feed accurate, ready for the next one. And it's just so unconventional when we're all obsessed with big pots and piling bait in the edge. But maybe I, I feel like I've been missing a trick with fishing hard pellets in the margins, you know. It's an, it makes things easy, if anything because I can use the same bait out in the lake as I can in the edge. And it's been working, it's been working for me. Not only today, but in recent matches. So maybe there's, I mean, that's a cracking fish. Look at that. It's a great big common, it's immaculate that one. What a stunning fish. No wonder it pulled the elastic out on the bite. That is a stunning fish. You won't get many fish nicer than that in the glebe, I'm telling you. Uh, in fact, just before we uh, lift him up, let's just trickle a few more pellets in because we want to catch another. And what a cracking common that is. Look at that. Lovely fish. Just popping back. He's absolutely immaculate, that fish. Eight pound. Go on, son. And I think the, 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 the main thing that I want to get across is that anyone who owns a pole can do this. You know, I'm not... I'm not doing anything that requires a four gram pole. I'm not fishing 16 meters up against an island. I'm not, um, you know, I'm not slapping. I'm not poking it in a little bush or anything like that. I'm literally fishing just here where I can feed by hand with a top kit and one piece of pole. Like how enjoyable is that and simple? 
anyone can do this. If you're only on a margin pole or a short pole, anyone can do this and catch loads of fish. So I think that that's something that is really important to get across. Just like I say, just keep those pellets going in. Oh, geez, I felt it. <laughs> I actually felt the fish <laughs> bang on the pole tip. The bites are incredible. I don't know how that one didn't hook itself, to be honest with you. Like I say, we're, I'm feeding to feel more than anything. So if I get indications and I won't feed, I'll wait until I hopefully hook one. But like I say, sometimes it's the noise, well, it is, it's not, not sometimes, all the time. It's the noise that instigates the bites. And sometimes you actually throw a pellet at your float and your float will bury immediately. And the pellet must only be that far below the surface. And it must just be the noise of the pellet in the, in the surface just triggers the fish into taking your hook bait. Not then. But because there's so few like pellets actually on the bottom, it just works. Like, I, I'm confident every bit of bait that I'm throwing in is getting at. There's no build up of bait on the bottom, we're just constantly pulling new fish into the swim with that noise. It's just a deadly, deadly way to fish. And simple, like, I just love it. Now this is actually a better demonstration because those other bites have been really quick. I don't want to say too quick because you can never be too quick, can they? But for the purposes of the video, we'll just catch one more. And one thing that um, I want to say is about relaying the rigging. Now I'm not, I don't like lifting and dropping, but I do like lifting my float and my whole rig out and then laying it back through. I think when you loose feeding like this, I do think your pellet is often at its most attractive when it's just hit the bottom, hence why you're getting these quick bites. So sometimes it can pay just to lift your rig up and lay it back in, maybe even throw an odd pellet over the top. And sometimes that, that, they see that pellet coming in, like that one, that just touched the bottom and it's gone. And that is, a, that is the perfect example of what I'm talking about. If I, if I just sit there, you're gonna catch fish, of course you are, but sometimes you can instigate them onto the hook even faster and, and just literally, Lifting the rig up and laying it back in can be really effective. Now, I'm just gonna put this on standby because that one is <laughs> charging off like a good one. I mean, this is amazing fishing, isn't it? I mean, I've managed to pick what can only be described as a dream peg today. I'm on peg 76 at, at the Glebe for people who know it. Windward corner, just a, just a great peg to be on. Um, I and mean, that's obviously, I've actually, I'm the only one on the lake today. I can't believe that no one else wants to come on fish this lake, but there you go. People don't like walking these days, and this is one of the lakes where you do have to get your gear on the barrow, but there you go, that's what we're up against. And there we go, it's a lovely fish to end on. Hopefully, that'll inspire you to try this method. It's absolutely deadly it's it's just a brilliant brilliant way to fish simple effective the bait bill's cheap you need a pint or so of eight mil pellets and you'll catch loads of lovely carp like that one so don't forget to like and subscribe to the new fish channel we'll see you again really soon